Doris Peterson. I worked for television and radio Victrola in 1952. My first assignment, I worked in a typing pool on 57 Building 5 uh, in the uh, accounts, pay accounts Payable Department. Mm -hmm. Mr. Patton was the section manager and the, it was a big open floor and it was just full of people paying and receiving bills. After a while, I got uh, Mr. Patton's secretary moved up and I took her job. And when I worked for Mr. Patton, his office was a corner office right next to the bridge. And we had no air conditioning, so the whole room were windows. And every morning, his office would be covered with grit from the bridge, and I would go in and dust the office and the bookcases and get ready for the day. Mm -hmm. And then I did secretarial work okay. for him. Good. And um, so from there, where did you go? I stayed with Mr. Patton for a long time. And then I went to, we moved to Cherry Hill. We moved out of Camden, that department, and we moved to Cherry Hill. Then in Cherry Hill, I went to work for the budgets and pricing department. Mm -hmm. And when I left pregnant in 1978, that, no, no, I'm sorry. When I left in 1960 pregnant, I left from the budgets and pricing department. Okay. Okay. Many years later, I went to an RCA group that were just getting together and someone called me and said, why don't you come? And it was an old group of mine. I said, yes, I would like to come and see everyone. At that party, Mark DeAndrea told me that if you, he said to me, are you thinking about coming back to work? And I said, well, maybe. He said, you know, if you come back and you stay for three years, you get all your seniority back from the first time you work, which was eight years, 52 to 60. So in 1978, I went down to Camden, took all my testing, was called, and I went into the broadcast division. And I worked there for several years. Then I went to work for Jack Santoro in systems engineering. From there, he moved on somewhere and I went to work for Jack Shannon. Wow. <laughs> and um, after that, Mr. Shannon retired Al Weinrich came down from the New York office, Dr. Weinrich, and I worked for him for a couple of years. When he left, GE came in, and then I worked for Mike Williams. Oh, I'm sorry, I left one boss out. Mm -hmm. Gary Bierman. I worked for Gary Bierman, uh, and I worked for Mike Williams. They were both GE people. Okay. So that was the the um, trek mm -hmm. that I took through RCA. Cool. Um, all right, so how were these supervisors? Fine. Everyone treated me really, really good. Mm -hmm. They did. I liked all of them. Mm -hmm. Do you, did you feel that they valued your work? Absolutely. Absolutely. How did you feel that? Why? Why? Yeah. Because I always got good raises. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I figured they did appreciate my work, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what about your co-workers? What were they like? I loved them. All of them. And we were in each other's weddings. I, girls that I met, even in the typing pool, 
we're in and we some of them still we still get together and are good friends today yes mm -hmm. I had a lot of good friends so it sounds like that just wasn't just a workplace then no what was it to you well it was RCA was a very very good company to work for mm -hmm. the benefits the bosses that I had the friendships that I made were always very important to me mm -hmm. when I left high school at 17 I went straight to RCA and in that typing pool already I had made some very good friends the one girl Lois Larson I was her maid of honor she was my maid of honor we're still friends today but we got paid with a check every Friday and we would call a taxi cab and we would go down to the bank we would have lunch together we would run in and out of the little shops we would all meet at a certain place get a cab again and go back to the plant and those friendships just through all of the different steps that I took in my secretarial career mm -hmm. I, I made very good friends even up to the very last to the end mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes very important we've heard the term a lot of times the RCA family what does mm -hmm. that mean to you when I first went to RCA and we got our little newsletter RCA family we went to the family store which was really great you just accepted immediately this is a family everyone cares for everyone everyone's doing a good job for the benefit of the company and it was just you just got taken right in with the words RCA family very comfortable with that from the very start mm -hmm. okay so it sounds like it went far beyond the workplace absolutely it did mm -hmm. the wonderful Christmas parties back in those early days we used to go over to a big hotel over in Philadelphia and RCA would give us these wonderful Christmas parties it was just a great company in every way mm -hmm. and for a young girl out of high school this was like really this is really neat <laughs> your husband uh, Pete worked at RCA also. yes he started in 52 Pete and I graduated from high school together oh, goodness. and we both went to RCA he went as a draftsman and I went into the typing pool, went in to be a secretary. Mm -hmm. And he stayed 42 years with RCA when he retired. Mm -hmm. I remember Pete as a gentle giant. He was. He was a wonderful man. He was. What was he like at RCA? Um, his work, because so much of his work was in eight building which was top secret and he would go down to NSA a lot and all he never talked about his work or what he did or anything mm -hmm. uh, his last job though he was a leader of a group that when we sold government equipment they would make up the books and in the books would be all the drawings and all the pieces that the government was buying that was his last job and that's the only job that I ever really knew mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that was all secret stuff too okay. um, how did you how do you think RCA was perceived in industry the oh. customers oh I think top-notch I had heard a story I don't know how far back this goes I was RCA I was told never made a microwave oven a microwave 
And one time there was some kind of a uh, tally being taken just with people. Uh, if you were to buy this and this and this, what company, what brand would you buy? And all these people put a microwave in the and from what the article that I remember, RCA never made a microwave. Mm -hmm. So people's perception of RCA putting out a really great product, no matter what it was, they would buy it, as I would. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you, uh, you worked in broadcast for a little yes, while. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. um, what was that like? Um, what do you recall from uh, the broadcast era? Well, it's funny what you remember about things. That was when I came back to work in 1978. I went into broadcast. And we did, we sold products all over the world, the um, studio equipment. And one of the jobs that I did was to type up invoices to be sent to these companies and it was in foreign languages. I remember that. Yeah. that way. You could not take your eyes off the paper that you're copying mm -hmm. because it was in foreign languages, right. <laughs> that I remember. Now I think for a little while you also um, worked um, in the space programs? Yes, Can you I tell did. us about that? Oh, that was exciting. That really, that was like something that you really could relate to. It was in the early days and in the news, and it was exciting. And the day that they did the shot, and I don't remember the name, and I should challenge her, me, when the school teacher, when, when it exploded and they all died, I can remember going into our conference room to watch that shot. And, I mean, we were, we were really into, and we did have an astronaut come, Sam Holt, one time had an astronaut come to speak to us, and with all our little questions that we had, that was exciting, because it was very relevant to the news, and you could really feel a part of that, because I know we did all of the communications with NASA, and that just we did such a great job and had such great engineers was was exciting mm -hmm. what were some of the engineers that you remember ed nossen <laughs> i really um um canavan i don't remember his first name though. see that's embarrassing um, did you ever deal with ed not really. Mm -hmm. I reported to Jack Santoro. Okay. Ed Nossen reported to Jack, and he had a secretary. So I just knew him, mm -hmm. but I knew him socially also because John Allen, the principal engineer, mm -hmm. he used to have two big parties every year. He had a summer swim party at his home, and he had a big Christmas party. And then, I, certainly, we all socialized together. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really ever work for Ed, but I knew he was brilliant. Okay, how did you know he was brilliant? Because constantly, Jack Santoro would call the group into the conference room to give Ed a check for something that he had just had patented, something that he had just invented. So I knew he was a very smart man. Mm -hmm. That's pretty remarkable. Um, so talk about the environment of the workplace. Did you have what you needed? Um, did you feel that, um, that the environment was a place where you wanted to work? Yes. Yes, I, I never had any complaints about the buildings were old until we moved to Cherry Hill, which, boy, that was such a blessing. Everything brand new in the ladies' rooms and all. But even when I worked in old Camden, everything was there that we needed. I never complained. None of the girls that I knew 
we never complained about anything. We had everything we needed to do our jobs. Mm -hmm. But Cherry Hill was a treat. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. What was the best thing about working for RCA? The best thing? Everything. I, I don't, everything. From the time I first went there, I just thought I was blessed to be in this place with these people. Everybody was happy. I didn't know anybody grumpy. Everybody was happy to be there and we all worked hard. And if we needed to stay uh, and work overtime on anything, we, we did what, what we needed to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything. What was the worst thing about working for RCA? GE. <laughs> buying us and just spoiling everything. Mm -hmm. I was, it was a Friday night. You know, there's just certain parts of your life that you never forget. Mm -hmm. it was a Friday night and I had gone to the market to do our food shopping. And I met an RCA person, which I don't recall anymore who that was. And he came up to me and he said, what do you think about the news? I said, what news? He said, GE, buy an RCA. I said, no. What? Where did you hear that? Oh, yeah, it's all over the news. It's all over the news. I couldn't believe it. And it changed so many lives. How did it change? Oh, my goodness. So many of the people that I worked with, like middle management, they were all let go. Mm. It was just horrible that men in their 50s and it was just awful and the fact that I believe they froze our pensions so that your pension wherever it was at that time could not continue to grow and then they started a new pension I think that that was how that went and then sick days changed RCA was just so wonderful with everything that they gave us, all of our um, vacation and sick days and everything. And GE changed. I know they changed everything. Mm -hmm. I was not happy when they came in. Although, the two bosses that I had, Mike Williams and uh, Gary Bierman, were very, very nice to work for and very nice to me. Mm -hmm. I understand that not all the GE people that came into Camden were so nice. Mm -hmm. I was lucky. Did you feel that there was still a family atmosphere? Well, when they let so many of, of the people that I knew in life, that middle management and secretaries, secretaries were let go, these GE people, came in, it changed. It changed. Yeah. Yeah, we've heard that a lot. Um, there's also been an inference that RCA changed the face of South Jersey. Do you have any opinion on that? I, I don't know that I can comment on that, okay. except that they employed so many people kept us all working, mm -hmm. making good salaries. In your neighborhood, were there others that worked for RCA? No, not many. Okay. Not many. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, as far as your journey in life, mm -hmm. how would you sum up uh, your journey at RCA. Just a job or what? No. Something that I always held dear to my heart. They were very good to my husband and to me. And the friendships that I still have today from working in RCA, no, they, they were a big part of my, my life. Okay. They were. Mm -hmm. I hold Nipper dear to my heart. <laughs> okay, did you have anything else that you wanted to share with us as far as recollections, stories, incidents, or anything like that while you were at RCA? 
I think I pretty much covered everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Well, thank you. Um, well, thank you for asking me, Jim. Really, thank you for asking me. I, I love sitting and just talking about RCA and the fun that we had, the 25-year award dinners mm -hmm. that we had. Yeah. Um, even though it took me a while, I had uh, 28 years with the company, so it took me a while. Mm -hmm. But I used to hostess at the 25-year awards dinners. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the fact that they made a big deal out of the working people mm -hmm. was great. Was yeah. great.